Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so I come from Rhode Island, and for generations, Rhode Island has been known for our coastline, our abundant fishing, and our strong maritime economy. Uh, now climate change is impacting our state's natural habitat, habitats, leaving our coasts more vulnerable to natural, natural disasters and contributing to significant biodiversity loss that is impacting our commercial fishing industry. As sea levels rise and beaches erode, uh, we risk losing even more valuable habitats, homes and businesses, and people's livelihoods. Uh, so we have to redouble our efforts to preserve and restore coastal habitats so that future generations can enjoy the same benefits that Rhode Islanders have for centuries. The Fish and Wildlife Service has been doing this work, and, and I thank you for it, through the Coastal Program, a unique partnership between federal officials and local communities to voluntarily restore protected habitats. The Fish and Wildlife Service in just the last 12 years has conducted more than 4,900 conservation projects, including 51 in Rhode Island, my home state, and restored more than 600,000 acres of habitat across the country, including 417 acres in Rhode Island. Uh, this has supported the full recovery and downlisting of at least 15 species nationwide and prevented at-risk species that call Rhode Island home, such as the New England cottontail and the salt marsh sparrow, from becoming endangered. The program's success is in large part thanks to the Fish and Wildlife Service's ability to work closely with local partners on the ground. In my district, for every one dollar put in by the coastal program, the Fish and Wildlife Service attracted an additional $73 in investment from local partners. I'll say that again, because you don't hear that kind of a ratio very often. One dollar put in for the Fish and Wildlife Service draws an additional $73 in investments from local partners. The Coastal Program's approach is evident on the ground in this collaboration with local partners. Fish and Wildlife personnel have worked closely with organizations like Save the Bay, the Town of Charlestown, the Town of Westerly, and others to restore the Ninigrit salt marsh. Salt marshes, by the way, shield and protect coastal areas from storm surges, and 70 percent of all commercial fish depend on them for at least part of their lives. Climate change and habitat restoration are complex, long-term challenges, so codifying the Coastal Program will ensure that the Fish and Wildlife Service can provide sustained and proactive attention to these issues and help protect coastal ecosystems for decades to come. Uh, so, um, Mr. Gerton, can you just talk a little bit about uh, the flexibilities in the coastal program that allow Fish and Wildlife Service to meet the specific needs of each community? Because obviously, a community in Rhode Island might have very different needs than in Maine or in Oregon or in Michigan. So how do you work with local partners to tailor the approach in an appropriate way? Thank you for your question, Congressman. Uh, sure, the Coastal Program is one of our flagship programs. It, it promotes a vision for collaborative, non-regulatory, voluntary partnership work throughout uh, coastal regions of the U.S. We partner with state fish and game agencies, tribal partners, private landowners, other entities. Uh, you, you mentioned the incredible uh, leveraging opportunities we can put on the ground with that, and certainly in Rhode Island that uh, Incredible work at Nitigrit Salt Marsh, uh, important to the Salt Marsh Sparrow, is a very key species for us in that uh, ecotype up there. But this is all about uh, developing a shared vis vision for the landscape, bringing the partners together, leveraging each other's resources, and using the best available science to help us tackle sea level rise, provide additional uh, access for recreation and commercial fishers, and uh, do a better job uh, sustaining uh, that coastline for future generations. Thank you. And, and one other aspect of the program that I want to make sure we highlight here and that we support is, you know, you're not just providing financial assistance, you're also providing technical support and capacity building for these local partners on the ground so that they can continue to maintain this work going forward. Can you talk a little bit more about how the technical assistance side of the program works? Sure. We can provide the geospatial mapping tools. We can provide biologists to help uh, partners develop some of these projects. We can provide the horsepower to get those projects permitted and, and, and stood up and implemented on the ground. And we can provide a lot of training and technical assistance to state employees, private landowners, and others. Uh, and then we can also tap into the, the wealth of expertise from the other federal and state agencies to bring capacity in as needed. Thank you. Terrific program, and I hope that we will all continue to support it on a, on a bipartisan basis. And I yield back. 